and using the first etude by Jan Schino for detachet practice. And um, I'm practicing it in, yeah, in a healthy, like, mezzo forte forte dynamic, um, more or less in the middle of the bow, so somewhere. <coughs> intention for the sound and for the stroke is that each note has full sound from beginning to the end so the note is filled and uh, then there is as little extra noise as possible when I'm changing the bows so the bow changes the, n the new bow should like start with a very soft articulation like a D for example so <laughs> and the kind of uh, directions I give myself for this is um, that the down bow should start from the upper arm, by moving the upper arm slightly back, but then immediately opening the forearm, and the up bow starts with closing the forearm, and then maybe bringing the upper arm back a little bit again to make up for the initial pulling back. So I'm not too like concerned about the mechanics of all of that. Um, I just want to start with this from the upper arm and then uh, have this even sound. <laughs> I'm subdividing in my head each note into two parts. So it's basically Okay. Then there is the matter of string crossings. So string crossings um, required to get as close as possible to the new string while playing the old note. So for example, if you have a D, <laughs> so that there is no abrupt, abrupt movement of the arm. It's all gradual. Moving towards the G string. Even like accepting that the other string will sound a little bit early. So the sound with a double stop. That requires in the left hand that the new note on the other string is prepared. So <laughs> it requires, like, for example, here. <laughs> open string, and I'm already putting the second finger down. And also, when coming back for the E flat. the original marking is slurs but as I said I'm using this as a detaché study and then there are like overall dynamics it's 
um, in three parts, uh, A, B, A. A part is marked piano and uh, B part is marked mezzo forte. So I'm not worrying about playing piano. So everything should be mezzo forte or maybe the middle part can even be forte. And then, yeah, there are also like uh, little crescendos and decrescendos like hairpin dynamics. And I want to observe those by uh, moving the length of the bow, so to to have a faster bow, basically, because at the same time, but I'm using more bow, bow, so the bow will be faster, and that will make the sound louder. And if I go back to normal, then that will be a decrescendo, right? Okay, so final <laughs> instruction that I give myself: I want to have one pass through this where I go back and forth if something doesn't come off as I would like to. So that's I, will, I give myself uh, the chance to repeat, but I don't want to interrupt. I just want to kind of maybe play backwards for a bit or establish a loop or something if that happens. And uh, I anticipate that this will <laughs> mostly happen for string crossings, but let's see. So starting from a relaxed state in the arm and
forgot to mention that I also want like flat hair all the time. I don't know if I observed that. So I finish this off by playing it through it completely like it was a performance, so no stopping and no redoing and uh, maybe playing it a little bit faster. Also with the dynamics as written, piano and mezzo forte. And um, I try to give just a little bit of a vibrato wriggle to each note or to have the hand be lively, the left hand. So let's see what comes of these good intentions. <laughs> dynamics because both speed is one aspect but also I think I need to change the sounding point. So and the other thing that I definitely need to practice is how to start like right at the beginning.
second half. forgot to keep the left hand active but overall I I can do that I just have to remember to do that and then the last line before the repeat was mangled with the accidentals but I'm not yeah I, I mean it's also like a little bit uncomfortable like <laughs> string and then B flat G. I can put them down at the same time but then I can't prepare so it would probably be better to have like put this down to remember, to remind myself. <laughs> to put the second finger down like a little bit steeper, like this. the fingernail facing myself more and not like very um, oriented towards the left because then if it is like a little bit more facing towards me it's easier for me to put down the third finger <laughs> so that's how I can manage it but it's a it's a difficult thing and then the, the next one is easier with the slip the E below the B flat but I need to remember that it's an E and not a B flat. <laughs> okay so what I'm happy about is um, that I'm preparing the fingers on the next strings early. I'm doing that quite well and that's also something that I've practiced for a long time so that didn't come like overnight but I have that and it's good and also I think the sound of the detaché was more or less even also for the string crossings although that could probably <laughs> still be improved <laughs> but okay so like that's where I'm at with it and uh, I'm happy to be at this place or to have come to this place from <laughs> much worse although it still can be improved further okay so that's my initial journey with this really lovely etude 